All right. Well, I guess we'll pack our bags and uh, get ready to uh, head to the polls, man. It's election time. Uh, it's a good time for uh, for cable TV and the news and all that good stuff. They are. They got plenty to talk about right now. Uh, as for us, we're back at it. Uh, I know we had a, we did one fifteen. Be sure you go check out episode one fifteen. We did the whole crew was back together. But I'm gonna bring back a little travel size here, a little travel size segment, 52. And again, news is hot right now, man. A lot of shit, a lot of stuff going on. Um, you know, we just got a, we just got, we've had about a week now with our power back on. It took a little while to get the power back on. Unlike uh, everybody, we don't have some point we have an energy, so we, ours was a little faster. But even still, there's a lot of folks out with the power, so we're back. And uh, it was funny when the power came back on. And I know this has been this the subject matter has been you know up and down all week and it's been attacked positively and negatively. But uh, for me, I you know the event that happened this last past Saturday for me it's it's pop culture and it's a part of history. It's a huge part of history. But again, I'm not going to be with the, you know not going to beat the dead horse. But I am going to say it's like it was funny how we didn't have no power. Power comes back on last Saturday, and uh, as soon as the power kicked back on, we were you know kind of enjoying the air condition and whatnot and. Um, it comes across Jennifer. We're watching, so we don't have a uh, light comes back on, but there's no Wi Fi. So, no Wi Fi, but you know, so we're watching TikTok. You know, me, my new source, TikTok. I'm watching TikTok. Jennifer's watching TikTok, you know, looking through her stuff because we hadn't had, you know, power for a while and our ATT shit, all that good stuff. Internet wasn't working, you know, service wasn't doing great. Anyway, so we're got, we got, we mirror the TV, TikTok to the TV there, and we're watching, and uh, I'm sketching and whatnot, and then Jennifer says, hey, uh, I think, uh, I think the I think Trump's been shot or he's shot or something. So I was like, got on the social media there, got on to, uh, hopped on X, man. And, and uh, X had, they had, you know, minute by minute, second by second updates, man. And I came across it. And right when I came across it, it was still live because the shots had just happened and just came live. It came back on and it was live. And this when they were, they were surrounded, the circus was around him, Trump, and he had just came out. And he was telling him, back up, back up, and then so I can, you know, I want to talk to the people. It was really cool to see that that moment was cool. That I caught that moment that we caught that moment watching it. I said, like I said, I watched it live on X because, again, we didn't have a, our cable was down, so we didn't. Have, but I was watching it on X, and it was just, it was the timing was perfect when that when I got to the thing and it was live, and it was just like he was putting his hand. In. For me, like I said, it's um, it's a part of history. It's something that I got to, I got to witness. I me, mean, Jennifer, and Dylan were watching. We're on the couch and we witnessed it, and it was, you know, it's, it's a big, you know, it's huge, man. For pop culture, it's huge, man. It's just. It was a, a time that we won't forget it. For me, it, it on on my end, it took me back to when I was in the third grade, and uh, I was in the third grade. We watched live uh, with the space shuttle blew up, and we were, we were third grade, and it was like that took me back to that. I was like, oh shit, I saw that. Now I'm seeing this. It was it was just something to 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 witness. It was something, but the power of a uh, you know, I got to give the guy you know, like him or not, man. He's got balls and. Um, you know the thing that shocked me that took me back uh, uh took me back was uh was that uh he was like you know what this happened but i'm not gonna cancel i'm not pushing nothing back i'm not putting no schedules back we're gonna move forward and we're gonna go to milwaukee we'll be in milwaukee you know sunday uh sunday night or monday night when uh, the when the rnc started the republican uh convention there and uh yeah, i thought that was that was uh that was big time man that was that's right that's he's, he's a man dude it's like he's not a he's not gonna uh pussyfoot around man he was great that was great i thought that was cool that he's like you know i'm not gonna postpone nothing let's go let's keep moving forward and that's cool you know i respect that you know like him or not i respect it and i think it's it's an amazing job to do that so i think he kicked ass on that but yeah we didn't have power and we finally kicked it back on you know hurricane thank you hurricane what was that name barry was it barrel merrill yeah something like that yeah they, they, you know, these names jesus um but yeah so Luckily, we got the power back just in time to, to see that. What I hated to have missed, you know, not to say, you know, I'm just saying, I didn't want to, it's, it's, the time was perfect, so we didn't get, I didn't get, you know, I didn't miss that. I, you know, what I hated to have to see that, you know, on the layers, and I got to watch it, witness it live, which was, it's powerful, man, it's cool. But yeah, so, election time, and uh, for me, it's not, uh, for me, this is a chance for, like I said, it's not a chance for me to, to talk about that and keep going and joining on to it, like people like to find the conspiracy theories and all that, you know, bullshit, I'm not into that. Uh, it happened, it happened, you know, they found the guy, he got a bullet, we move on. So now we go to, you know, now we're, I, I, I enjoy watching like the, the RNC and the, the Democrat you know, convention. I like them watching them all because again, I'm interested in pop culture and history. So I like to see if something happens just like at the, 
uh, at, I was watching the the DNC, the, the Democrat thing, years back. And this is before, you know, Obama was Obama and he was still a senator. And you saw, I witnessed that. I was like, okay, this guy, yeah, he's got some charisma there. He, you know, he's probably going to do some, he's probably going to do something one day. And if, you know, he did, you know, 2008. But, and then this year they had a few people that I saw that I saw there was a black gentleman. I hate that I didn't catch his name and I didn't write it down, but there's a black gentleman that spoke. And man, he, he had the crowd going, man. This was like on, I think it was like Tuesday night or Wednesday night. I can't remember what day it was, Tuesday night. But, man, he had the crowd going. I think it was the same night that it, I think Amber Rose was on. And it was cool to see Amber Rose up there. You know, it's a, I know it's a different dynamic for uh, for the Republicans. I'm sure they were – I'm sure some of them were happy and some weren't happy about it. But, you know, she was um, – I just like what she said. She said it was cool. Like, she she thought that Trump was racist and all this stuff. But she looked for herself, and she couldn't find, you know, nothing. And she, you know, she dug deep, and she did her research and whatnot. But uh, it was cool to see somebody like that there to uh, – Somebody outside the box, you know, it was really cool to see her there. Um, Amber Rose with her tattoos and all her goods out there. You know, it was a it was a treat. But yeah, so the RNC was happening this past week, uh, and um, you know, the RNC always it, for me it's always uh, it's always funny for me because like I you know it, I uh, I watch these things and it's it's hilarious because like both sides would do it, but the Republicans usually. Uh, do this more they kind of shoot themselves in the foot a little more than than the democrats but it's always funny for them to play i think reagan had it born in the usa and i, I think I, I forget who else had it there was another re re republican that had uh, little pink houses by john mellencamp or john cougar mellencamp whatever fucking name he wants to use cougar mellencamp whatever but bruce springsteen born in the usa is popular for them to use and it was just funny that how i always knew that that's not that's not an American song. That's an anti, you know, uh, anti-patriotic song. It's talking about. I thought there's nothing wrong with it. Like I said, Bruce Springsteen. You know, I grew up with that music, and and uh, he was to me, he was an icon on MTV. Watching him as an icon on TV, you know, as a musician, not his personal bullshit, but as a TV on TV, I always respected his music and the way he did. Because you know, his voice is, I think it's heinous, but it works. You know, for some reason, it works. Just like Joe Cocker and uh, what the hell's the other one from? Um, Oh God, you got Bob Dylan. Like I said, Bob Dylan, fantastic writer, terrible voice. I think his voice is terrible, but they are icons and they are they are special, special, special musicians. But anyway, you know, Bruce Springsteen, the Born in the USA, is always mis mis misused. They always misuse it. Republicans always misuse it. Little Pink Houses, they always misuse it too. And it's because uh, it's uh, John Cougar Mellencamp was being sarcastic. He's like, "Ain't that America for you and me?" Like he's being sarcastic, you know, I, or, uh, being a dick, you know, he's being a douche, but. Yeah, these are artists. They have the freedom to do that. That's what we, you know, that's the freedom. That's the beauty of it is that they get to express their ideas. And then uh, I think Fleetwood Mac, when the Clintons used uh, uh, Don't Stop, Think About Tomorrow, uh, Fleetwood Mac, that song was about, because uh, that whole group, Fleetwood Mac, they were all screwing each other. They were all uh, co uh, they were all hopped up on coke and screwing each other. So it was about relationships in the, in the band and whatnot. So it's just funny what these, you know, with, you know how politicians use these songs and they usually quite don't know what they mean but it's just it's just funny it's just music it's just a good time i get it they're just using it for the and it's like if i hear uh, what's his name lee greenwood if i hear him one more time i'm gonna scream i respect the song the song's great but i think we need to find something else you know find a different you know find a different anthem there because that one i've had it with him i've had it with him and uh but he's you know he's fine whatever but yeah so we're watching the RNC, watching that, and, uh, you know, and then, it, again, back to the thing as a child, like I said, watching the space shuttle thing, back as a child the R at the RNC, the, the um, convention there, you know, Kid Rock comes out, and that's like a 90s guy, you know, it's just like all this, you know, nostalgia shit comes back, and it's just funny how, you know, Kid Rock got 90s, and he had stuff in 88, you know, his rap stuff and, he, and whatnot, but um, it's crazy to see Kid Rock there, and, you uh, to see him performing in front of the, this crowd was just, it was different. Again, outside the box. They, they need that, though, because they need, yeah, they, they need, they need uh, energy, man. They need to be livened up. They need, they need, uh, and then they are known as the, you know, they're considered like the rebel, the thing now. Now they're the rebel because they're going out against the grain now, which is great. You know, they needed that. They needed me kicking the ass. Uh, and then again, childhood again, kicking in when I was watching the, uh, the thing there. Um, Hogan. Hogan comes out, man. He's doing his whole shtick and his, you know, brother and all that stuff. It was great to see it. It's, it was cool, man. Because, like I said, flat, for me, 
it's not probably for me. It flashes back to me watching him on, um, you know, Saturday morning, uh, uh, Saturday morning cartoons where they had the WWF had their cartoon, and I would go to the I, me being a fat pig that I am as a kid. I used to go to the Seven Eleven. I would buy the different when they first came out. I went to Seven Eleven, but it was all like the ice cream. It was a uh, Hogan and Andre the Giant, and it was all of them. Right, they had the can the it was I think it was like a cookie outside. I think it was like a cookie on the outside, and um, I'm not sure how it was, but. They had their own ice creams and i would i love those and i would eat those and you know watch the wrestling and whatnot but yeah those are the things that i would was drawn back to when i was watching you know this, the the convention it wasn't you know politics yes whatever you're watching just listening but it was just cool to see all these these guys like hogan come back and kid rock and it was just uh it's fun man and i know they're all boys and stuff because they're, they're at the ufc dana white out there it was it was it's, it's fun man it's it's changing the the um it's just it's changing the, the the way it looks. But anyway, so back to the Trump thing. Like I said, everybody's talked about it. But for me, it again kicks me back to kid being a kid and uh, remembering uh, in eighty one. I think it was uh, March of eighty one. March of eighty one when Reagan was assassinated. It was uh, in the afternoon. I think uh, Reagan had just did a speech. I think it was at the convention. He did a speech. He was coming out of the. He's coming out of the building. Okay, so. Yeah, Hinkley, uh, to his, you know, the, uh, he, to his luck, he stumbled upon, uh, he's 25 year old, he had a lot of mental issues, uh, Hinkley, uh, and he, he was just perfect timing, he was coming around the corner, they were coming out, and he was going to kill, hoping, he was he was hoping to kill Reagan uh, to impress Jodie Foster, that was his whole point, because he wanted to impress Jodie Foster, he was a, he was a, what do you call it, he was a pervert, he was a, what do you call it, uh, stalker, sorry, a stalker. And yeah, hey, Jodie Foster, go figure. Oof, I could have picked a better. Um, is it, I remember Jodie Foster. That's the one from the accused, right? Where she's dancing at the at the pinball machine. Yeah, I could have. Yeah, okay. Anyway, yeah, teach their own. You know, everybody's got their own flavor, I guess. But yeah, he did. He shot at them, and uh, he shot. Of course, Reagan got shot. Threw Reagan in the, in the in the in the limousine. There threw him in the limousine. Secret Service is on point this day, uh, and they threw him in the limo. And uh, got him in there, and then and between all that, there's three other folks that got shot. One of the guy, other guys that got shot that was kind of a, an important piece to this was uh, uh, James Brady. Uh, James Brady got clipped as well, and his was a little more. Um, this was more a little more severe. I think he got a little. He was uh, White House press secretary James Brady. He was the one that was shot pretty pretty hardcore. He was he got the the brunt of it, the, the hard thing of it, and he took him a long time to recover and rehabilitate, and uh, he. In return, uh, they did a, they did a couple movies on him. I think uh, one of them was on HBO. It was called Without Warning: The James Brady Story, and uh, Bo Bridges played him. And uh, it was it was actually a really strong, really powerful movie. It was really good. It showed him how he rehabilitated and how he was uh, you know showed him at home with his family and how he would get frustrated and he would you know yell at his wife and it was a thing. But it wasn't you know he just he just couldn't get his thing, couldn't grab a glass or. You know, he, I think he was paralyzed on one side for a while, but like I said, he had a lot of, a lot of a rehab and he did, he came out of it, but yeah, he, um, and then him, time went on and then they passed because of him, they passed the Brady bill and the Brady bill was, it, I think it, it, it was, it created the, the background check. Um, if you're going to buy a, a firearm, you got to do the background check and that to this day, that's still, it's still a law and you know, it's still the background check, you know, people have their. You know, people have their ups and downs with these things, but it's just for me. I was just I enjoyed watching the movie. Like I said, Bo, uh, Bo Bridges is uh, one of my favorites. He also Bo Bridges also played one of my favorite uh, drag racing stars in a movie called Heart Like a Wheel. It's a Shirley Mo Downey uh, movie document uh, movie. I forget what you call it. Uh, anyway, a, a drama, a docu drama. Yeah, um, Jennifer's on the couch sick, and she's giving me the the scoop over there. She's giving me, hey, idiot, it's this one. Anyway, yeah, he got uh, so he was in Heart Like a Wheel. He was a Shirley Moe Downey uh, movie, and he was uh, he played Connie Coletta, and Connie Coletta was a big. Uh, he had airplanes and airplane services. He would shuttle, you know, in the airplanes. He would take people, you know, rich people here and there. And he just he had a air, uh, it was like a taxi service, but for the air. And he, he was filthy rich, and he got into drag racing, and that's how I I learned about you know Bo Bridges. I started I watched him in that movie. He was fantastic. He had. He was such a douche, but he was just, he had that thing. He wasn't a handsome man, I, don't, I wouldn't say, but he had that, that appeal, that sex appeal, and, you know, which is that's why uh, he's in the movies. But, yeah, he he was in that, 
that's where I really saw him, and I saw him shine, and I also saw him, and uh, he was in The Wizard as well. He was the dad of The Wizard, of uh, Fred Savage and his brother. They were all, you know, trying to play the, the video game thing. Uh, he was the dad in that, and also, who was in that? Uh, oh, man, what's his name? Oh, shit. Uh, yeah, so the Brady Bill got through, and like I said, people him and hauled about that and complained about it. But, you know, at the time, you know, it was just, like I said, it, it was done, and it's been, like I said, it's been in law since, and it's... Apparently, it's not going anywhere. Uh, and then they have some 81. Like I said, that was in March of the the Reagan assassination. was in 81. And then flash forward just a couple months ahead. In May of 81, 1981, May of 1981, Pope John Paul II is, has his uh, assassination attempt on his life. And he's uh, he was shot and wounded. He was in um, the Vatican, the square in the Vatican there and that the guy's name I can't pronounce I'll put it down I'll put it in the words here I'll put the name of it but his name was like this long and I, I'm an idiot I can't pronounce it but the guy shot him a couple times struck him twice and um uh later he was sentenced to life and uh but I think the brilliant part about this was that after it was all said and done and the Pope you know healed and everything he had a he went and he he pardoned the guy they pardoned him and then the guy the Pope forgave him for, for shooting at him, which is, that's, you know, I guess that's what you're in the business of. You got to forgive because I, there's no way in hell I'd be able to forgive that if somebody tried to shoot at me, you know. Uh, I'd be like, you know, Tupac and shit, screaming and shit, yelling, spitting and shit. Anyway, but yeah, so that, so yeah, it was hot. Anyone was hot for getting assassinated, man. It was, it was, it was a thing. It was a trend, man. It was an in thing, man, to try to get assassinated in 81. Uh, but he survived too as well. The Pope survived and, um, yeah, you know, and I'm sure he had, he's got a lot of people on his side, so he should have made it, you know, he shouldn't have died because he's got a lot of, a lot of influence on his side. He's a big influencer up there, up uh, upstairs there. Um, but yeah, man, so that, that was, uh, that's what, you know, kick, that's what kicked in my brain when I, when I heard these, when I saw this thing about, you know, with Trump and all that, it kind of reminded me, all those things went through my mind right away. It was Reagan and the Pope was going, that went through my mind right away, um, yeah, Reagan's thing was, uh, I think they recently, in 21, 2021, they were celebrated four years. So we're at 43 years of Reagan's assassination. And uh, also, Reagan, man, he was a ham, dude. You know, I, you know he was in the movies because he's got that presence and he's got that timing, man. He's, you, know, he's, you know he's an actor. Uh, because it, uh, after his assassination attempt, he was doing a speech and a balloon popped. And he goes, uh, missed me. And it was just like, it was so, he's just on point, man. That dude was always on point. The other thing I liked about uh, Reagan there that he said he was talking to uh, when he got shot, they took him to the hospital. And he lost like after it all set, after they found the wound and everything, they fixed him. He lost like half the blood, half his blood, and his, and they, he barely, barely, you know, he's scratched by. You know, he barely made it through. Um, the thing for me that, that that made me laugh about uh, Reagan there was, uh, you know, he he had fun with, even while he was on the gurney going to the thing. It was he had fun with it because you know. Uh, Nancy showed up and he told Nancy, honey, I forgot the duck. You know, it was just, it's, he's, he's money, dude. He's, he's, he's a, he's a ham, dude. Um, he said that and then wheeling him back, uh, of course, everybody, everybody probably knows this quote. He goes, he told the surgeon, I hope we're, he goes, I hope you guys are Republicans, the surgeons and the doctors. And then the doctor said, no worry, sir. The doctor, the doctor that worked on him was a, a, liberal, a staunch liberal Democrat, but he told him today, we're all Republicans, sir. Don't worry, we're gonna take care of you. And they, they took care of him, but yeah, he lost a shit ton of blood. Uh he almost, you know, was he almost ate shit, man, but he made it though. He made it through. And I think Hinkley, uh, the sh his shooter, uh, he didn't get they didn't kill him, but he got arrested and then he uh, pleaded insanity and then now he's in a nut house forever. And um, but yeah, that's where he got but yeah, Jody Foster, huh? Okay, Jody Foster. I uh, still can't get over that one. And as far as Brady, uh, 2014, uh, James Brady, um, he um, he passed away in 2014, I believe. 2014, he passed away, and uh, they said it was because of the the wounds that he suffered 30 years, 30 you know years ago. He because of those wounds, he you know he died from those things, and I, we we believe it's just something that probably was lodged in there. Who the, who knows? I'm just but that's what he passed away from, and uh, from the from the shooting there. So yeah, but those um crazy times, man. It's just it's crazy times now, and even this things don't change much, you know. Time is just you know different time. But in the like I said, this past week, man, it's been a nightmare, man. We lost tons of people, Richard Simmons, all these folks, man, and uh, it's been it's been something, man. It's, it's scary for me because all these people I'm growing up with are you know 
popping off, they're dying off, you know, uh, Richard Simmons, Dr. Ruth, man, um, I didn't know she was a Holocaust survivor, Dr. Ruth, man, she was, uh, she was talking sex, and, you know, uh, it, 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 you know, it's just, it's, it's baffling that an older woman like that, well, I guess she's been around, so she knows how to get around, she knows her way around a good hand job, I guess, so she knows shit, so she knows how to do shit, and how to, you know, thrust and whatnot, but she, it's a shame, because yeah, I used to remember watching her on late night TV, and she'd come up on, like, Jay, Le not Jay, yeah, Jay Leno, or, David Letterman should be on there and she'd be talking her shit and her, you know, she'd give advice and whatnot. I think she was on Donahue a hundred, hundred times, you know, and she was a, she was a class. She was gold, man. She was gold. Um, yeah, man. So we've been, uh, been catching up on everything. Like I said, we were out without power for a while. So I'm trying to catch up on all the shows and everything. My, my guilty pleasures, my 90 day fiance, you know, all this good stuff. Uh, but I did, uh, did stumble upon, uh, not stumble, but I, I did was, I was been waiting. I've been waiting. I've been waiting for uh, Cobra Kai to return. It finally returned. I'm about two, three episodes in. <sighs> it's, it's all right. It's fine. It's fine. Um, it's just, it's not, I, I think they've went far enough. I think we went, we went too many seasons too long. Like I said, I liked it for the nostalgia purposes, of course. I liked it for the, for childhood memories and the, holding on to watching Johnny and, 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 you know, Daniel. But uh, it's. I think it's time to let it go. It's just not. It's just not hitting it. All the damn actors too. We were going. I was looking at this. All the damn actors are like close to thirty. They all look like kids. Like all the actors are pretty damn young looking. But but they're almost all thirty. They're all like late twenties, almost thirty. Um, which kind of took me back because that one, the one Larusso's daughter. She looks like she's twelve, and she's like I think she's like twenty eight or something like that. Yeah, it's nuts. But yeah, it's a uh, it's election time, man. It's uh, it's gonna be see what's gonna happen here. I don't know. Um, curious. We're a few months away from the from the results here, and see what you know who's gonna if we you know stay with the same route or we get something new or see what happens in November, man. I'm curious to see what's gonna happen. Uh, also, uh, we again we'll be still we're still doing the thing with the guys, the whole crew, and everything. We'll get together, you know, probably like once a month or twice a month. But yeah, be sure to go check out one, episode one fifteen. We were all back together. We got a little, got a new little setup now. It's a, it's a nice little, uh, nice little uh, area there where we can shoot our, our little show there, and uh, it's cool, man. It's cool. We're gonna keep doing it. Like I said, we're not gonna stop doing this. It's for me, it's fun. It's an outlet for me to kind of just talk shit and just kind of get it out there. But um, yeah, interesting week, interesting week to say the least. And uh, keep an eye on us and uh, stay tuned. Thank you.